Hello, this is the National Weather Service in Springfield. It's shortly after noon on Wednesday, March 29th. Wanting to give you an updated briefing with regards to the severe weather potential for Friday, uh, as well as the potential for any localized flooding threat and gusty winds uh, on the day as Friday as well. So what we're looking at as far as the main components of this system, uh, mainly looking at strong to severe, severe thunderstorm potential on Friday morning as the earliest and continuing through the afternoon into early evening as storms push eastward across the area. Uh, as you look at the severe weather risk right now, the Storm Prediction Center has an outlook for areas mainly along and east of Highway 65 uh, is an enhanced risk. So a level three out of five means that our best severe weather potential with this system is going to be mainly along and east of Springfield. Now, if storms do initiate a little bit earlier in the morning, we could see uh, development as far west as the Joplin Metro into the Interstate 49 corridor. Uh, but otherwise, most of the severe threat is going to be moving through the area very quickly. Uh, one thing we want to mention, too, is because these storms are going to be moving so fast, any one county will probably only see severe risk for the order of a couple hours. Uh, these storms might move through your area or even your county within a half hour or less with how fast they're moving. So keep that in mind if you're going to be out and about during the day on Friday. Now, in addition to these severe thunderstorms, we also have generally less than an inch of rain falling across the area. It's about a half inch to an inch. While this normally wouldn't cause any localized flooding concerns uh, because the system is moving so fast, we do still have wet soils, especially across south central Missouri. Uh, so if you do see any flooding, not expecting any widespread flooding risk, uh, but you could see some localized, maybe low water crossings or susceptible low areas, uh, see a little bit of flooding uh, from Friday into Friday night behind this system. Additionally, in addition to the thunderstorm, severe thunderstorm potential, we're also looking at some gusty non-thunderstorm winds uh, as the system moves through and a cold front moves through during the day on Friday. Um, so again, gonna be breezy late Thursday into Friday because of that. Um, as far as severe weather hazards, right now we're looking at a line of storms developing pretty quickly uh, on Friday, but as far as specific hazards, whether uh, wind, hail, or tornado, uh, that's still gonna need some fine tuning as we go forward. Um, into tomorrow and get a better handle of what we're expecting with these storms. As far as the timeline for thunderstorm development, uh, there might be some isolated showers and non-severe thunderstorms as we get into Thursday evening and overnight, especially for areas uh, as you get into like Joplin, Nevada, Pittsburgh, uh, Springfield closer to the overnight hours, and then as you get into further eastern portions of the area, uh, Rolla, Salem, Houston, West Plains, looking at more of a low chance for any of that development during the early morning hours on Friday. Now you'll see as we get into the morning, again, especially mid to late morning, so the 9, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. and onwards, um, if the storms do develop that early, that's where we're looking at these higher chances for, again, along the, the Branson, Springfield, Highway 65 corridor in areas east, uh, getting that severe threat once you get into uh, late morning and the midday hours, and then quickly moving east as you get into the afternoon. Um, the areas that'll be most impacted during the afternoon into late afternoon hours will be in the Eastern Ozarks, again, Rolla, Salem, Houston, uh, Eminence, West Plains, and Alton. Those areas will see it a little bit later in the day in terms of the severe weather potential. Again, also looking at the gusty winds that I mentioned earlier, Thursday we'll start to see southerly winds pick up, looking at most gusts being generally uh, 20 to about 30 miles an hour for a good chunk of the area. But if you get into southeast Kansas and west central Missouri, the, the I-49 corridor, that's where you could see gusts up to about 40 miles an hour. The really gusty day outside of thunderstorm wind gusts is going to be on Friday. And if you look, really the Anywhere along the Interstate 44 corridor areas north and west of there, uh, you're looking at very gusty winds, 40, 45 miles per hour plus. Uh, some areas could even see over 50 mile per hour gusts at times, especially as you get into Friday afternoon, um, later afternoon behind the cold frontal passage. Now with those gusty winds will also be some drier conditions, especially for the western portions of our area that are gonna be seeing the drier air come in first. And this is actually the area, so Pittsburgh, Nevada, areas essentially north and west of Joplin uh, is where you were looking at the highest potential for maybe even some fire weather 
uh, concerns as we get into Friday afternoon. And because of these strong winds, uh, it won't take long to dry out any grasses um, or even some small twigs in this area. So if you do get a fire that starts, expect that there might be some rapid spread of fire concerns during the day and during especially the afternoon on Friday in the western portions of our area. Now, as far as confidence details, I mentioned that we still have some, there's still some differences with regards to when exactly we're gonna see the highest impact, uh, whether it's gonna be starting as early as the mid morning or as late as the early afternoon um, before storms begin to push east. So we're gonna be looking at that in detail over the next 24 to 36 hours, as well as we're gonna be the highest impact locations um, aside of generally speaking, east of Highway 65 being the highest potential for severe weather, um, again, over the next day, day and a half is where we'll really be able to fine tune uh, where we expect the highest severe weather potential to be. And again, looking at those scenarios, so if you do get the development of thunderstorms Friday morning, uh, the severe weather potential will start a little bit further west, closer to the Interstate 49 corridor before storms quickly move east across the area. Second scenario would be thunderstorms developing Friday early afternoon, which would place that highest severe weather potential east of the Highway 65 corridor. So because we're still a couple days out from this event, keep in mind that uh, just know where you need to go, uh, whether you're at home, at work, or on the road, have places in mind of where you may need to go to uh, protect yourself, find a safe place from severe weather if it should strike. Uh, make sure that you have emergency supplies ready in case um, you need to do that as well. Uh, the day before, so we, as we get into Thursday, again, adjust your plans. Uh, make sure that you're accounting for the fact that we could see some, some severe weather across the area. Make sure your phone uh, can receive warnings and alerts, as well as making sure that you have access to other information when it comes to severe weather uh, alerts over your phone, on TV, NOAA weather radio, are all great options for doing that. And then finally, the day of, make sure that you're keeping track of if there's any um, imminent danger with regards to thunderstorms over the next few hours or getting even closer to storms bearing down on you. Have an idea of making sure that you act on the plan that you've created. Um, and when a warning is issued, making sure that, that you are quickly going to the safe place that you have established for yourself. So to keep up with the latest information with regards to this impact and as well as the forecast, a uh, great option for that is our latest forecast information at weather.gov slash Springfield. Um, you can also access our latest thinking through uh, graphics and uh, recordings as well on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at NWS Springfield. That's all we've got for now, and we'll keep in touch. Please stay safe out there.